Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the respiratory lecture. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about physical examination findings in pneumonia. One thing that you guys will find most often is consolidation of the lungs. So this is caused most often by pneumonia. Less commonly could be by hemorrhage or bleeding. So physical exam findings you'll find with the consolidation. Number one, you'll find dullness to percussion. Uh, this is due to a dense tissue when percussed sounds dull. So anytime you hear the word dense, think of the word dull. Another physical exam finding of consolidation will be increased tactile fremitus. And this increases with increased tissue density. And then finally, when you're assessing lung sounds, you'll hear bronchial or tubular breath sounds, often with late inspiratory crackles that do not clear with cough. So Whenever you're hearing these types of breath sounds, such as inspiratory crackles, have the patient cough, see if they clear with the cough. If it clears with the cough, maybe not pneumonia, but if it does not, I want you to be highly suspicious for pneumonia or consolidation. Let's start talking about asthma next. So asthma is an airway disease, and sometimes it's going to take some work in terms of making the diagnosis of asthma. So the definition of asthma is a common chronic disorder that is complex and characterized by underlying airway inflammation that leads to variable airflow obstruction and also bronchial hyperresponsiveness. So the airway inflammation happens first, the bronchospasm generally follows. Now in terms of thinking of symptoms consistent with asthma, I want you to think of asthma when symptoms include recurrent cough, wheezing, shortness of breath and or chest tightness. This is due to variable airflow obstruction and bronchial hyperresponsiveness triggered by an underlying airway inflammation. Generally the symptoms occur or worsen at nighttime and the reasoning behind this is because this is when cortisol levels are the lowest. Symptoms also can worsen with exercise. They get a lot worse with viral upper respiratory infections, also aero allergens and or pulmonary irritants such as first or secondhand smoke. And then in terms of the airflow obstruction with asthma, it's at least partially reversible. So in this case, there's an increase in the forced expiratory volume greater than or equal to 12% from the baseline post short acting beta 2 agonist use or albuterol use. And then finally, consider the diagnosis of asthma and perform spirometry if any of these indicators are present. Okay, So these indicators are not diagnostic by themselves, but the presence of multiple key indicators increases the probability of the diagnosis of asthma. And finally, spirometry is needed to make the diagnosis of asthma. The peak flow meter is used for monitoring, not for the diagnosis of asthma. And an objective evaluation for airflow obstruction should be conducted with every asthma-related visit. I wanted to talk about physical examination findings in asthma. Some of these overlap with COPD. So in the condition of asthma or air trapping, objective findings you're going to find are hyperresonance, decreased tactile fremitus, you're going to also hear a wheeze on long auscultation. Generally, first you'll hear expiratory wheeze and then inspiratory later on. Finally, low diaphragms, more often seen in COPD. And then finally, increased anteroposterior diameter, also known as barrel chest. It's most often a finding in COPD, or you'll see this in patients with long standing, poorly controlled asthma. Finally, another possible etiology of a cough that I want you guys to consider would be gastroesophageal reflux disease, otherwise known as GERD. So when you're talking about the diagnosis of GERD, there are a few findings or symptoms that will be reported by the patient most commonly. Some of these would include hoarseness of their voice, a recurrent cough, also chronic pharyngitis is a common finding in GERD. Um, when Looking at the diagnosis of GERD, endoscopy is recommended in the presence of alarming findings. So you might ask, what are alarming findings when talking about GERD? So some alarming findings would be difficulty swallowing, painful swallowing, untended weight loss, vomiting blood, black or bloody stools, chest pain, or choking. Anytime you are suspecting GERD and have any of these alarming 
findings, go ahead and set the patient up with gastroenterology and get them set up for endoscopy. The last etiology of cough that I want to discuss with you guys is allergic rhinitis or seasonal allergies. So allergic rhinitis is an inflammatory IgE mediated disease due to genetic and environmental interactions. And it's generally characterized by nasal congestion, rhinorrhea or nasal drainage, also sneezing, intraocular and or nasal itching. Sometimes you'll find that patients have cough with this etiology as well. So some risk factors for allergic disorders, the pattern of symptoms, other allergic comorbidities, and your physical examination will help differentiate between allergic rhinitis, the common cold, and acute bacterial rhinosinusitis. A common physical exam finding that you'll see with allergic rhinitis is cobblestoning of the posterior pharynx. So a cobblestone appearance is a fairly common finding in allergic rhinitis, and this is due to polygonal cells bulging out from the mucosal surface to varying degrees. It's usually seen in the posterior pharyngeal wall or just laterally behind the tonsillar pillars. And the theory behind the cause of this is it supposedly reflects lymphoid nodular hyperplasia of the immune system responding to stimulating factors, whether that be acid reflux, post-nasal drainage, breathing in dry air, but most likely allergies, as in this case. The cobblestone appearance is included together with the Denny Morgan sign. You'll see allergic shiners, the very common allergic salute, and its consequence, the horizontal nasal crease among physical features highly suggestive of allergic rhinitis, and it's useful as an adjunct to sensitivity testing for establishing the allergic diagnosis.